All right, we are now joined by our second place finisher, Kyle Larson, driver of the number 42 Eno Chevrolet. Um, Kyle, can you talk about your run out there for us today? Oh, yeah, just turn the volume up <laughs> on the TV. No, uh, uh, yeah, I was uh, you know, really loose um, all day long and couldn't run the top like I wanted to. And uh, you know, the times I did go up there, I w I'd get really loose in, and I, I hit the wall once you know, pretty hard, and then a second time there late in the race. But, um, yeah, I, I was too loose to, to keep pace, I felt like, for the first half of a run. But the, the second half, I would, you know, I'd lose front grip, and my car would tighten up, and I could actually you know, make ground up. So um, better long run car than short run. But, um, you know, I had a, had a shot to win, and then I sped on pit road, and um, then had to restart in the back there behind everybody. And uh, so definitely wasn't expecting to finish second, so I'm, I'm happy about that, but uh, a little disappointed that I, I sped on pit road because it got you know, crazy there. Um, and and you know, maybe, maybe I could have been Justin you know, out, out in the lead. Great. With that, we'll open up for questions if we have any for Kyle Larson. Kyle, thanks for the time. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah. All righty. We'll keep going here with our post-race media availabilities for the House.com 300 here at Chicagoland Speedway. We're now joined by our regular season NASCAR Xfinity Series champion, Elliot Sadler, driver of the number one, one main financial Chevrolet. Elliot, can you just talk about you know what it means to be our regular season champion here in the NASCAR Xfinity Series? Well, it's um, it's definitely very uh, humbling to me, guys. Um, to be the uh, first ever regular season uh, champion for the Xfinity Series means a lot to me and my family. Um, you know, we were able to win the very first ever Xfinity playoff race last year, Kentucky, and then the first one again to be the regular season champion. We're the first person to ever be in a Xfinity Series playoff and make the chase in the Cup Series. And it's a lot of firsts uh, in my career that I'm very proud of. Um, being a, such a small town boy from Southern Virginia, it uh, means a lot to me. And um, wish I could take all the credit, but I can't. Um, my, my team give me gives me really good race cars week in and week out and very consistent to where we can come compete uh, every single week. And um, it means the world to me to be able to drive their cars and it means the world to me to be uh, the regular season champion. And uh, that just gives us some uh, incentive to try to get uh, both trophies this year when we get to Homestead. Outstanding. Uh, with that, we'll open it up for some questions for Elliot. If you have one, just raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start in uh, Kelly in the back. Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Elliot, you've been in this position before last year, for instance. What will make uh, the difference this year? What what will make this year um, the year that you can go to Homestead and, and leave with the trophy? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I, I felt like last year my team was primed and ready to go, and then we lost our crew chief for Homestead. And, um, you know, Kevin was not able to be there with us, and that um, made it uh, a lot harder to try to be as, as competitive uh, when he and I worked together every single race last year. So I think the difference is to make sure we, we get through the playoffs, no mistakes, you know, no issues, and, and Kevin and I can go in the homestead together, and I feel like we can give anybody a run for their money. So we've been very consistent the last two months on ovals, been very happy with our program. I think it showed today with Justin and I running the top five, six all day long, showing the speeds that we have in our cars. And uh, you know, hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be there when that uh, when the time comes. Bob, go ahead. Chris, ESPN. Two questions. The first, um, what will you need to do th in this uh, championship run compared to the others where you've, you've been close? Yeah, uh, man, it's, and, and it's so different how I've lost each one with the total points. You know, to Ricky both times, and then last year we would have won the total points by a lot, and we led pretty much the entire season last year. Just we got beat in one race by a better, you know, by a better car that night. So it, to me and, and Kevin and my guys, our, our main focus has been everything we need to do and everything we need to know and to have and to learn that it's all about Homestead, 100%. Um, everything comes down to that one race, and hopefully we're learning as much as we can each and every week so when we get to Homestead we know exactly – uh, what we need to have in the car driving wise to, to contend for a championship. I wish I could sit here and say, you know, A, B, or C, but you just don't know till you till you jump those hurdles in each and every race that you go through. 
And then on that final restart, could you tell where Jones went? Were you like, they better black flag him? Were you like, did he violate a rule? <laughs> what, what was going through your head from what you saw? So the last restart, Justin did a great job on the start and, and got a good jump. And um, I learned a lesson today uh, to help me for the playoffs with that. But I, I just looked, and Eric wasn't even nowhere near me. He was already, he was trying to lay back, and he was running 20 mile hours faster. But my spotter, when we got to start finish line, I looked. He said, well, they're going to black flag to 20 because he pulled way out way early. So I didn't say anything. I didn't have to. My spotter saw it, and I figured if he saw it from way up top, then NASCAR saw it. So it would been a lot easier if he had pushed me. He's probably fast enough to pass both of us. But um, anyway, that, that kind of hurt us a little bit on momentum-wise. Uh, but when you're a cup driver running the Xfinity Series, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So you can do all those things, and at the end of the day, who cares? If they catch you, it doesn't matter. You know, he's not racing for points. We'll go to Jerry, then back to Kelly. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires net and PRN. You talked about talking with your team and your crew. Have you at any point so far thought, this is the year that I can get there and win this championship? Has that crossed your mind? Yeah, I thought that last year, too. <laughs> I thought last year was by far my best shot to win a championship, and it was uh, until Kevin wasn't with us at Homestead. Um, I'm sitting here telling you now, I, I feel like uh, Junior Motorsports has absolutely the best chance to win this championship between Justin, myself, and William. Uh, Justin was really fast at Homestead last year. William won the truck race there, and we finished like third, I think. So uh, I feel like between our teammates is going to be a good battle. Um, but I feel like I'm in the same position I'm in last year. My team is strong enough to put me in position to win the race that I need to win to win this championship. I just got to follow through with it and make it happen. We'll go to Kelly and then over here to Chris. Elliot, do you need to win the championship? I mean, you rattled off before things that you've accomplished in your career. You've won races everywhere. Do you, do you feel like you need to win this championship? Um, I, that, that's a really good question on the, on the word need. I want to worse than anything. Uh, I want to hand my trophy to my parents. That's what I want to do. Um, you know, you don't realize till you get older how much your parents sacrificed when you were a kid to make sure you had good equipment, whether it was in go-karts or late models or maybe investing money in your career when you first started Xfinity racing or bush racing back then. So, you know, my mom and dad have, have been supportive of me, and they're huge race fans of the sport. And... Uh, I, I think a little a little part of me would always be empty uh, if I have to walk away from the sport without a championship. Yes, I, I think I would like to have that to fulfill, uh, you know, my dreams and my wishes of the hard work I've put in this sport. So, uh, yes, I, 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 you can pretty much say I need to win a championship before I retire to, to feel like I've accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish uh, as a person, as a dad, as a father, and, and as a race car driver. We'll go over here to Chris. Chris Tony at Trends.com. Elliot, next week at Kentucky Speedway, it's the final standalone race of the of the season. Uh, how crazy can we expect that race to get, knowing there won't be a whole lot of Cup Invaders in that race? Can we, you know, remember how crazy it was last year there? Yeah, you, kind of, you kind of took the words out of my mouth. Um, what we learned last year, the first race in each round was crazy. Everybody was kind of give, uh, not giving and taking and taking advantage of each other and wrecking a lot of cars, trying to get that best first step in play. Uh, last year, we were very fortunate to win Kentucky, which means the next two races we could kind of cruise and get ready for the second round. Kentucky's a big race for us. It's a night race, slick racetrack, new pavement, nighttime, a lot of grip. It's going to be fast. And I think people are going to be um, trying to make their way in pretty quick and be uh, hard-nosed drivers. And I think you're going to see a lot of wrecks at Kentucky next week. I think it's going to be the same thing we saw last year where people being very aggressive and feel like, you know, it's, Sometimes people don't understand there's three races in each stage and each playoff round and, and not just one. So uh, I think you're going to see some guys make mistakes next week. We'll wrap up with Jerry here. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on that. Um you mentioned your other teammates, and everybody's probably going to ask you at some point, but I'll start now. What if there's three of y'all and – Somebody else at Homestead, what do you, how do you race those guys on going into the final laps? Well, we're going to race each other hard, just like Justin and I did today. I mean, I pushed him to the lead, which gave him an advantage, and then I just kind of left it between him and I to try to settle it. So uh, he did a better job than I did today and, and won the race. Um, our crew's still 
share a ton of notes. I mean, his crew chief was in my truck after practice yesterday. We were sharing everything because the seven maybe didn't feel they was as, or were as good as we were yesterday after practice, and we share everything at our at our team. That's the way Junior Motorsports does business. That's what we believe in. We think it, the more we help each other, the better we're going to be uh, to get to Homestead, and then may the best man win. Elliot, thank you for the time today, and congratulations on your regular season championship. All right, we'll keep going with our post-race media availabilities here for the House.com 300 here at Chicagoland Speedway. We're now joined by members of our race-winning team for Justin Allgaier. Uh, we have Jason Burdett, the crew chief, and uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., co-owner of JR Motorsports. Jason, we'll start with you. Can you talk about, you know, heck of a race out there? Can you talk about what it means to get a win here? Yeah, you know, it's an incredible. Um, uh, Brant. Um, our, our sponsor brand, obviously being from just down the road in, in Springfield, uh, Justin grew up here uh, in Riverton, Illinois, Springfield, Illinois. Um, so it's a it's a it's a really amazing day, right? Uh, brand guys are so stoked that that we got the win here at their home track. The back stretch says Brant all the way down at the tents and turn four all say Brant. So you know it's just a big day for everybody at Junior Motorsports. Uh, Brant, Chevrolet, um, couldn't couldn't have worked out any better. Dale, your team's been great all season. Can you talk about you know what's made you guys so successful all year? Oh well, there's a lot of things. Uh, <clears throat> starts with uh, people, and uh, you know we got a lot of great employees, crew chiefs, engineers. Um, that makes them drivers look really good. Makes them cars look really good. Um, our relationship with Hendrick Motorsports not. Uh, not only on the motors and, and chassis and all that stuff, but the technical side as well is a big uh, is a big uh, part of our performance, and uh, all that's you know possible because of the partners like Brant and uh, we have uh, you know we have some very good uh, supportive partners that give us proper funding to uh, to keep our keep our cars running well and keep them up front, and it's a it's a it's a big. You know, it's a big circle uh, of of things happening uh, to keep it going. So this was a great. Uh, the driver did a lot today. I mean, he had a great restart. <coughs> so Justin really, uh, really got after it there, and uh, just found themselves with an opportunity and seized it. So uh, the car was competitive and and held on there at the end to give him the opportunity to win the race. Outstanding. With that, we'll open up for questions. If you have questions, please just raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. We'll start right here in the front with Jordan. Side. Thank you. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com. This question is for Dale. Dale, not only do you have three cars in the playoffs, but all three are legit contenders for the championship. How do you manage that going forward? I don't really plan on doing anything. Um, you know, these guys work really well together. Uh, the crew chiefs um, all have a, a you know, a close relationship that goes beyond junior motorsports. So they all work really well together. So, uh, and the drivers, I think, all have each other's mutual respect. And uh, I think that's why we're so successful uh, is because of the way they work together and, and worked, work uh, to improve each other. So, uh, you know, I mean, when it gets, if we have the opportunity to ra compete against each other at Homestead, you know, it's uh, once the green flag drops, it's kind of every man for himself. But I think that um, shouldn't be any, shouldn't be hard at all to get these keep these guys working well together up into that point because they've seen how um, how well that's gone so far. So it's exciting, you know, to have cars this competitive, and uh, you have to remind yourself uh, to earlier times when when it was really hard to run up in the top three, really hard to win races. Um, we got a great group of people now with a lot of talent, a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of ability uh, behind these cars that make them so competitive today. Additional questions for our race-winning team here today. Bob, right here in the back. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Up to Dale. First off, what can this do as far as momentum for your organization? You win the regular season title and the final race going into the playoffs. Well, I think Jason could probably speak on that a little better than I could, but, you know, f 
from my experience, you know, when you win, you go into the next race with so much confidence and, and it boosts morale and uh, it really helps the, you know, the team realize what they're capable of, realize their potential. And um, so I think, you know, you go, you go into the next event with more confidence, but that, you know, this is such a short cycle bes before someone else has won a race and you're back to second guessing what you're doing and, you know, sort of uh, back in the grind and, and the thick of it. But these, these wins can, can raise that confidence and, and that can carry you for, for several weeks. And, um, you know, so I think that, you know, Jason can kind of speak on what the wins do for him and for the team, you know, personally. But but I think that it just shows us as a company what what we're capable of every time, any time, any one of our cars wins, you know. And it and it's a incredible source of pride to be able to win a race against the competition we race against. And um, on that final restart, Dale, were you like, oh man, Jones, they got a black flag him, or when you're on the outside, how far can you go to the outside? on a restart I didn't look I didn't watch I mean I didn't really pay attention to his restart I thought that once he got into second he's gonna be hard to uh, beat you know and that we had our work cut out for us because he's very good and his car is very good and they had ran well all day so I was just worried about him from a competition standpoint um, and even when they said that he was black flag I really didn't pay much attention to the replays to, to, to take a look at it I really wasn't that worried about it um, just if he wasn't black flag, we was going to have our hands full, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Chris, go ahead. Chris Knight, CatchFans.com. Jason, congratulations on the win. But, Dale, you know, I missed your media availability yesterday, so I apologize. But um, I wanted to ask you about Tyler Reddick being uh, added as the new driver for JRM for 2018 and what you've seen in Tyler Reddick that you think makes him a good fit for the program. Well, I think that um, – you know, I, he's got a lot of people that believe in him. I've talked to a lot of folks in the industry that feel like he's got what it takes uh, from what I've seen. Uh, you know, he's got good speed and he's got a lot of, uh, he's got a ton of experience and a lot of different stuff. Um, but I've talked to some people that work directly with him and, and several of the opportunities he's had in the past and a lot of people speak very highly of him that have actually been able to work alongside him. So, uh, I have good confidence that we can give him great opportunity and give him what he needs, and that really what that's really what it comes down to. Um, when we work with somebody, it's we don't really, I don't we don't really measure a driver's talent. We just sort of try to give them the best opportunity we can, and if they're not winning races or not running well enough, we have to work harder as a company to do a better job of giving them what they need. So, um, <coughs> but I feel good about the opportunity, um, and it's a great opportunity for Junior Motorsports. It's very, very uh, positive for our company uh, to be able to continue to keep four cars going. We, we go, you know, we year to year with these programs and these sponsorships and relationships, and we don't know from one year to the next whether we're going to be a one-car team or a four-car team. And in this environment, it's so volatile that you just can't ever take anything for granted. So I'm very excited that we're going to be able to remain four cars our employees are thrilled about that, and I th we think we got us a little wheel man uh, to get in there and do a good job. You talked to Brad about it because he drove for Brad in the truck series and won a bunch of races for him, a couple races for him. Uh, I haven't had a chance to really talk to Brad. I was a little, I was <coughs> wanting to talk to some other people that actually uh, worked with him within the teams, and you know, uh, maybe a l nothing. I mean, I think Brad could have gave me plenty of great advice on that, but. Um, I wanted it, what I heard from the people that I heard it from gave me a lot of confidence. I'll say that. Dale, Jason, thank you guys so much for your time. All right, we'll keep going with our post race media availabilities here for the House.com 300 and the NASCAR Xfinity Series here at Chicagoland Speedway. Uh, we are now joined by Daniel Hemrick, driver of the number 21 Blue Gate Bank Chevrolet. Daniel, you're in the playoffs. You just finished fourth. Can you talk about what it means to be in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs? Yeah, it's uh, it's Vegas. Been a been a long road to get to here. Um, 
No, we're a uh, yeah, first year team together. Um, everybody at RCR is 21 Blue Gate Bank Chevy teams. Worked, worked really hard all year to try to make sure we had some momentum leading towards this part of the year. We've done a great job over the last couple of weeks of executing from uh, start of practice through qualifying into the race and getting our race car better throughout the race, which is something we can really uh, hold our heads up high about as we roll into the playoffs here. So it's pumped to be in it. Uh, now the fun sh uh, you know, definitely starts here. Outstanding. With that, we'll open up for questions for Daniel. If you guys have a question for Daniel, please raise your hand, and we'll get, we'll get going. Any questions for Daniel? All right, Daniel, thanks for the time. Good luck in the playoffs, buddy. Hey, for thanks. All right, we'll keep going with our post-race media availabilities here for the 17th annual TheHouse.com 300. We are now joined by our race winner, Justin Algeyer, driver of the number seven, Brant Celebrating the Future AG Chevrolet. Justin, can you talk about what it means to be a winner here today at well, Chicago? For, first of all, I'm sorry I'm late, but I, I know you all have seen the big tent up there in turn three and four, and there's a lot of people that uh, decided that they were going to come down. Rick Brandt always tells me to cause a party, and today uh, we did that, uh, and they all came down to party in Victory Lane, so we took a little longer than normal, so I apologize for that, but um, just a, a, an awesome weekend. You know, obviously coming home, um, this is this is my home racetrack, racetrack that I've loved uh, dearly for a number of years and, and was fortunate enough to get a win here before. Uh, but to, to have a brand on the car, um, celebrating the future VAG, um, FFA 4H on the car this weekend, um, you know, just the whole connection of, of being from Illinois to go to Victory Lane was, was incredible. Um, obviously, you know, this is the last race before the, the playoffs. And, and for us, those bonus points are, are huge. You know, that puts us in a great spot going into these first three races of the playoffs. And uh, this team never never gives up. They never never quit. And uh, at one point in the race today, I wasn't even sure if we were going to finish in the top ten. And then to be able to come back and, uh, and go to victory lane was, was really special. So those last restarts were so important. We were able to, uh, to get good restarts. And, and ultimately, you know, that's what got us to victory lane. Outstanding. And just so you know, too, Justin, we did have Dale Jr. and Jason in here earlier, and they were incredibly proud of you as well. So um, if we have questions for our race winner, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you, and uh, we'll get going. Chris, you got a question? ChrisKnightKitchens.com. Justin Gretz. Thank you. On the win. Um, of all your Xfinity Series victories, how special is it to win at your hometown? I know it's not your first Xfinity win here, but this one's going to be pretty special, too. Uh, the first one I actually won on a fuel mileage race, and the car that was leading ran out of gas, and I, I passed him and then ran out of gas. It was Carl Edwards, and that one meant a lot. You know, that was special. But on the flip side of it, um, that was quite a few years ago, and I've been fortunate enough to really, uh, really evaluate where I am in, in my racing career, and I think this one, the meaning of it is is a lot a lot greater. Not that not that the first one was bad by any means, but um, you know to to be able to really understand and realize how cool it is to win at your home racetrack with all of those uh, brand guests and customers and, and and employees up there. That's something that you, you you just you can't believe it until it happens. And and when it does, man, I'll tell you those last three or four laps there. Um, I was I, I could hear everything. I was waiting for something to go wrong. I was waiting for the caution to come out. You know, there were so many things that I had running through my mind. And uh, when we finally got to that point where we took the white, it was like the emotions just kind of flooded over me. And it was like, man, this is this is incredible. Um, this one definitely ranks right up there at the top uh, of all the wins. You know, the win in Phoenix earlier this year was cool uh, because it, it locked us into the playoffs. But how cool is it now to to be able to win the last race before the playoffs start? Um, two in one season, which is something I've never done before either. So that's uh, hopefully that's the, the start of, you know, maybe another five or six before this is over. That'd be incredible, wouldn't it? We'll go to Dan and then to Aaron in the back. Justin, do you still have all your family or family here? Or they, do you have a lot of people here from Illinois to watch? Yeah, um, it's funny. You know, I, I've been fortunate enough to, um, to have a lot of friends and family that normally come up for this race. And, and typically... The, the races where nobody shows up is the ones that we usually do really well at. Um, but I had all of my, uh, my mom and dad and my, my in-laws and, and um, uh, all of the f cousins and, and brother-in-law and, and everybody that, that uh, lives close still, they were all up here. Uh, probably the coolest part of the day, though, was in all the victories that I've been fortunate enough to go to Victory Lane in, my daughter's never made it to Victory Lane, not even in a dirt car. Um, you know, every time, I, every time I've g even gone to Victory Lane in a dirt car, she's not been there that night. 
so today to see her her face light up and and uh, to to see you know she was throwing confetti and and just absolutely in love with with being a victory lane and that's a feeling and, a, and an emotion that um, you know growing up my dad worked in, in the racing industry and and was in victory lane a lot with um, you know the, the race tracks that they went to and and you know he serviced the the Arca series and I got to go to victory lane and and see the emotion as a kid and then carried that love for victory lane on after that and so I hope that that instills in her and. You know, if she wants to be a race car driver, that's great too. But but just I, I hope she realizes um, at an older age how how special that moment is and how cool it is. She's four. Aaron in the back. Aaron Beard and kicking the tires. Justin, with your win today and Byron's issues, you had a nine point swing in playoff points, and now you're just two points out of the top spot going into the playoffs. How huge was this race for you for your playoffs, and do you feel like this was a championship statement? Well, first of all, I don't know that it's a championship statement or not. I, I don't know. I can't tell you that. It's, it's still way too early. Um, you know, we saw it last year. Speed is one thing, but being able to execute at the end of these races is another. And uh, today I felt so bad for William. You know, I, obviously we knew that statistically we could beat William in, in the, the, the end of the regular season. Uh, but on the flip side of it, you know, I, I've got a lot of respect for, for all three of my teammates. Um, I want to see those guys thrive. And, and, you know, we locked all four in today. That was the ultimate goal. You know, at the end of the day, that was the ultimate goal. But um, never did I want to see William have trouble. You know, when, I, when I did see it, uh, I kind of changed my mindset a little bit of, okay, well, obviously he's, he's having trouble. There is that opportunity to go get those points. And we know how crucial they are in this, in this playoffs format. So, um, you know, that was the goal was to try and gain as many points as we could gain. Uh, never did I think that we could go to victory lane and, and get a nine-point swing. I mean, that's, that's incredible in itself. But, um, you know, we got one, two, three. Like I said, all four locked in. And, and I really strongly believe that when it comes to Homestead, we could have four junior motorsports cars in, in, in the battle for the, the championship. And that would be absolutely incredible. We'll go to Bob over here, and then we'll wrap up on our right over here. Bob Pockers, ESPN. You're so good at Homestead. How much is do you feel like is it kind of just getting there and then letting it play out? 100% getting there. You know, last year we felt like we had the speed and we had the finishes, and something crazy happened. Uh, I think it was what K Kansas and Kentucky both. We we got uh, damage at at Kansas and then got um, slightly wrecked at Kentucky and was able to rebound back. You know, I think I think execution of these races is so important nowadays. You know, and there's so many good teams. I mean, you look at the top 12. Um, to be honest with you, I don't I don't want to race any of them because they're all really really good, and and they're all teams that you feel like could be capable of going out each and every week and and competing for for you know wins and top fives. And you know, so for us, this is a big moment because I feel like mile and a half program has been our weakness at Junior Motorsports, Sports, um, at least on the seven team. And so to, to be able to come out today and to have that that momentum going into the the playoffs, that's huge. That's that's what we got to have. And and um, you know I think these these next few races are going to be about not necessarily conservation, but uh, you know finishing three, moving on to the next three, finishing three, and then moving on to Homestead. Uh, you know it's not going to be easy by any means. There's a lot of teams that are rising to the occasion right now, and we just got to make sure we execute. We'll go over here to our right. SeagullFrontStretch.com. You mentioned that this is the first season that you've had multiple wins in your career. Um, what does that do for you and your team's psyche moving forward into the playoffs? It's huge. Um, you know, this team at Junior Motorsports is it's incredible to work for. You know, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to work with a lot of great people in my racing career. And, and you know, there's always circumstances that, that make things good or don't, right? And, and, and for me, I feel like right now, the group of guys that I've got on my race team, um, whether that's pit crew or, or uh, shop guys or, or uh, road crew, spotters, uh, truck drivers, it doesn't matter. You know, this whole team rallies behind each other. We've had some loss this year. Um, you know, we lost Adam that was on the five team. That was really hard on our on our organization, and I think that that, that was a testament to how close and of a group we've had. Um, my, tr my truck driver, Matt, he lost his father – a couple weeks ago, and and you know we've had a lot of loss on this team, and, and that's kind of what's rallied this whole team together. You know we want to be successful, we want to win races, we want to be up front, and uh, this team just the 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 hard work and dedication. I mean every team works hard, but the the dedication that these guys have behind the scenes is is absolutely incredible. I wouldn't want to do it with anybody else right now. And Justin, before we let you go, we did have one more question from Lee Spencer. She wanted to know uh, where would your career be without uh, Brant? 
nowhere. Um, I'd probably be back at home in, in Springfield, Illinois, and working for my dad. Um, you know, Rick Brandt, uh, GB, Glenn, Glenn Brandt, Evelyn Brandt Thomas, kind of the, the entire group up there is, is they're incredible people. And, and, you know, I think um, if you talk to their customers, you talk to their employees, um, there's not a soul that th they would explain brand, uh, professional agriculture the same way I just explained junior motorsports. And, and uh, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, uh, Rick Brandt has said many, many times that he loves working with, with Dale Jr. And, and, and Kelly because he feels like the, the family atmosphere and, and how they've come from the bottom and kind of worked their way up through and, and they're successful at it. You know, there's a lot of similarities. And, and I think from a, from a driver and a, and a, and a sponsor, um, you couldn't ask for a better relationship. You know, uh, obviously, there's been a lot of damage uh, to Texas and to, and to Florida with um, the two hurricanes and, and a lot of other uh, islands. Um, you know, they, they were affected as, as much probably as, as a lot of people, too. They, they have a plant down there in, in Florida. A lot, of their, um, a lot of their employees and customers were dealing with the, the hurricane as well. And, you know, we were – Rick and I were talking back and forth – Nonstop about you know Florida and how they were doing and how how everything was going on down there and and he was trying to fly back in the day after the the hurricane hit just to make sure that all the employees were okay and I think that 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 to me um, gives me a lot of pride in in the company that I represent and companies period uh, you know plural of all the companies but um, definitely something that's incredible for me excellent well Justin thank you so much and uh, good luck in the playoffs thanks guys appreciate it.